So Microsoft released xCloud this week for browsers and Apple devices. They're still labeling it a beta, but it's certainly more widely available and much more accessible now. And in particular, they've been upgrading the hardware in the infrastructure of xCloud to new Series X boards for better performance and capabilities. Let's take a look at what it is. So this is the main xCloud interface. I'm running this on my gaming PC that I just recently upgraded to the Windows 11 Insider Developer Build. And it's running in the Edge browser. So Microsoft just rolled out xCloud access to a whole lot more folks, basically anybody with Game Pass Ultimate now. Although they're still labeling it as a beta, you can get to it through Edge, Chrome, and Safari, as well as Apple devices. And I think they're also taking it to some more world regions as well. But it looks pretty good. It makes the web browser essentially feel like a game console. So if we go through the UI here, there are some featured titles at the top, followed by this jump back in section, which has games that have recently loaded or recently played, um, either in xCloud itself, or it also carried them over from uh, my Xbox Series X console as well. Below that, of course, there's a major focus on Game Pass here, as most of the library available in xCloud is Game Pass Focus Games, um, as well as a nice little section there about what was recently added and what's leaving soon since some of the third-party titles that are in xCloud won't stay there indefinitely. And then at the bottom there's some kind of filtering by game types or game genres and then the see all games option at the very end. So there's quite a bit here. Again, there's more than 100 titles in xCloud and uh, Game Pass. There's also more than 100 titles available here. Of course, a lot of Microsoft first party, Microsoft licensed titles, and titles, of course, again, that are available in Game Pass. Quite a lot of good games, quite a lot of mix of, of different games, different types of games and such. One thing I'd hope to see for the whole xCloud initiative in the long run is it not being so Game Pass focused. But if I've purchased uh, a game with Microsoft digitally, regardless of whether that game is in Game Pass or not, I would like to be able to play that game in xCloud as well. And I would imagine that that's the ultimate goal, goal that it doesn't need to be solely Game Pass focused, but more about accessing your personal library. They're still making money. So there is a search. Uh, the search works really well. I always prefer searches that are filtered searches and give your results as you type, rather than having to type an entire phrase and then hit enter, clear the search. Of course, we go back to the, to the main list. So let's go back to the main page here and scroll back up to the top. There is one control on the upper right. This kind of functions like a, a view which account or log in to a specific account for this instance of xCloud. And there's a couple of options to set here as well. Unfortunately, the only options that are here are related to privacy and accessibility. There's only a, a few of them. There's nothing uh, related to technical options, which is kind of a bummer. I'd like to see some of the technical details here or be able to control things like what bit rate are we running at. Um, universally and with the transition of the xCloud hardware infrastructure to the Xbox Series X chips, they did bump the quality of the stream up uh, up to 1080p 60 FPS so it's not doing 4k yet um, but again I'd, I'd like to see some technicals and uh, technical options and technical details that's probably coming as well it's just not just not here yet so let's go ahead and start a game I'll just pick doom I should mention as well that I'm using my Xbox Elite Series 2 controller uh, connected to the computer through the Microsoft available wireless controller adapter. It's generally how I play my PC games. It works great. And it works just as well for this too. So pretty quick to establish a stream. Several seconds there, maybe a little bit more. And now it's just you know, basically loading the game just like it would load from a, a cold start or a cold boot on an actual Xbox. So one of the excellent aspects, in my opinion, of gaming with Microsoft, gaming with Xbox, in general is the cloud saves. They've offered cloud saves for a very long time. You're always safe that you can change councils, move from one council to another, 
upgrade uh, even from you know, one generation to another and your save games are always there um, instantly loaded instantly restored and within the xCloud part of the Xbox ecosystem that's exactly the same situation here so I actually did have a, a just very early starter save game for Doom that's accessible and loadable from the Microsoft Xbox services. Now, interestingly, when I fired this up for the first time, it did give me a dialog box that indicated you have progress uh, in this game essentially that's not accessible. Do you want to load your last synced save game and potentially you know, forego that other unsaved progress? And the reason that came up is because I actually had had this game loaded on my Xbox Series X console and it was in a quick resume state. So there's a little bit of a dichotomy there and I guess maybe a potential to lose some game progress if you were playing a game on, a, on the console hardware itself, made some progress that wasn't saved and wasn't cloud synced to leave the game in that quick resume state, you can't get access to that progress when you switch devices or switch platforms essentially moving from hardware hardware to the cloud. For most games, it's probably not really a concern. Generally speaking, games autosave very frequently and those autosaves are uploaded just the same. Um, so in reality, I don't think I necessarily lost any progress. Uh, just my character was in the game, you know, standing there relative to where I had moved to or, or walked to since the last time it had saved. That's not really necessarily progress, but Depending on the title, there could be could be an opportunity to lose you know some probably minimal set of progress if you switch platforms a lot. So this loaded, it looks it looks pretty good. You know, all things considered, again, it's a 1080p stream. It is 60 FPS. That's great, but it's it's a little soft, um, and you can tell you know, the the same game running on the native console hardware, or certainly the same game running natively on the PC is really going to blow this away. But it's also a little bit of an unfair comparison. Again, I'm, I'm actually running this on super powerful gaming PC hardware. You wouldn't really use xCloud in this environment. You'd be using it on a secondary screen, a laptop, a mobile device, you know, something along those lines. And also generally wouldn't expect to be running xCloud primarily um, on this type of a display. So I'm in my living room right now. This is the 85 inch Sony. If I were to take the same stream and put it on an 11 inch iPad or a smaller laptop screen, something like that, it's certainly gonna look a lot better when you take a, a soft image and blow it up very large. It doesn't do, really do it, an, it any favors, so to speak. But this plays pretty smooth. The, the one thing about it though is, is I can very quickly notice the latency involved in the controls. Um, this is a pretty fast paced game and just looking around, there's you can feel feel the latency essentially. I think if I played long enough, you know, if you if you played 15 minutes, half an hour or so, you'd probably start to get used to it, start to adjust. I mean, if you switch back to a native device, a console or a PC, you know, you you'd end up feeling the difference again. It's kind of maybe like a cruise ship effect if you've ever taken a cruise. After a week on the ship, you come back to solid land and you still kind of feel like you're moving around, but after a few more days, you, you readjust again. I think that for the most part, that's how, how this would go. It's not egregiously bad, but it's definitely there and there's, there's a bit of a difference. There's also a little bit of a, of a say, instability to the graphics is I move or I move quickly and you can kind of see things blur and just go a little go a little ugly and then they lock back in as soon as we as soon as you stop um, I presume that that's entirely based on on the stream but it loads it plays um, as I've been experimenting with this um, I haven't had any technical trouble with it I've never had a failure to launch of a title or of a game I've never had a game crash um, never had any issue that's required me to restart anything. So from a stability perspective in that respect, it's pretty impressive. In the upper left hand corner, we see there's both an ellipses and this Xbox button. So the ellipses is, I believe here, 
specifically for because we're, we're playing in edge and this is like a browser control that allows you to um, control some audio quit the game provide feedback or exit full screen again as i mentioned i had the browser maximized in full screen mode the xbox control can be accessed by mouse and mouse click or by just hitting the xbox button on the controller itself and this is really cool i think this works essentially just like the console it's, it's basically a minimized version right of the same uh, ui that pops up on xbox hardware when you press the xbox button on your controller so you have access to your friends you can do parties from here send invitations view achievements as well as quit the game let's go ahead and do that so there's a confirmation dialogue that's kind of nice just in case you hit it by accident takes some takes a second or two to kind of close the stream down and disengage and of course since we're still in a beta here they're asking for playback experience we'll just bypass that but all in all, pretty, pretty, pretty solid, pretty quick, um, quick to get in, quick to get out. That's really one of the nice things about gaming in this environment that in the long run, when this is all super powered and super high end and on the par with local hardware, it's going to really be excellent to be able to just launch any game and not have to worry about downloads and installs, local space limitations and that sort of thing. But this is looking pretty good. I think there's tremendous potential here. I really like various aspects of what Microsoft is doing with Xbox as a brand um, and as a gaming platform with options. If you want to build yourself a high-end PC, great. Play our games, enjoy Game Pass, all these things are available there. You want to buy a hardware console, we'll give you a couple options to do that, right? Series X, Series S, and now this also. For folks that may not want to you know have hardware um, or buy consoles or do pcs that sort of thing and as they bring this as an app uh, as has already kind of been announced to straight to smart tv platforms and uh, maybe they release the little streaming dongle stick um, and bringing it actually to the last gen console hardware even too um, it's just pretty amazing how much access and kind of freedom of choice they're planning to provide um, within this platform so I'm definitely in support of that and in the long run of course we might be playing all of our games this way whether we like it or not it's gonna be a while I think before we get to that point so pretty cool uh, hopefully they'll follow this up with increasing quality increasing technical aspects and such in fairly short order but we'll track it here on the channel revisit it as new capabilities and, and new games and such come along so if you have any questions about xCloud, there's other things that maybe you want to see me explore or show off, go ahead and post in the comments. Um, as I mentioned, I'm running this on a Windows 11 updated computer, so I'm going to be following up this video very shortly with a, kind of an overview, active overview of, of Windows 11, and then some additional videos on specific gaming aspects of Windows 11 that I, I thought, as I've experimented a little bit so far, are looking pretty promising. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Thanks.